Hello, thank you for being in a new video. This time we have an unboxing with a much bigger box than usual. This is the Infinix Note 30 Pro. Let's get started. This is one of the most interesting devices on the market, especially considering the price. It seems that Infinix is ready to fully attack the market. Its price is 6,499 pesos. On the screen you see the reference price in dollars, just to give you an idea. But remember that the prices here are not the same as over there. But there are several things in that price range that stand out too much in this equipment. But first join me in opening the box, which as you'll notice says it comes with a design inspired by the Tesla Science Center. They have a collaboration with them for this model. And that's it. We've simplified the box. I think they could have saved a lot of that big box. I don't think they needed that much, but okay, let's see what we have here. As you realize, we include here some special images of all these Tesla Science Center, which you might find useful if you like to keep all of these, their postcards. So it's interesting, the extra little gift, it never hurts. In addition to that, they include this other sleeve that also comes with all this Tesla stuff. Let the physicists tell us if all these annotations on the sleeve make sense. I hope they do. But one of the most interesting things is this. You're looking at it right. This is a wireless charger. Why? Because this mid-range device has wireless charging. This charger comes with the USB-C port. So it's very much appreciated that they include it. And most of all, that they include this feature in such a budget device. Now let's get the contents of this box out of the way. On this box it is noted that it has sound by JBL, which I believe will mean that it will have a very good quality and 68 watts load. Unbelievable. Let's keep pulling out the contents. Before we take this label off, let's see that they also highlight the presence of wireless charging. Presence of the NFC chip. We also have 120 Hz AMO LED display. 108 megapixel camera. 8 gigabytes of RAM with another 8 virtual. And 256 gigabytes of storage. Boy, did Infinix get aggressive with the price of this device? It's possibly the best we'll find in its range. What do you think of the back cover design? I like the finish, although I don't like the module as much. I feel like it's a bit asymmetrical or... I don't know. Maybe it would have looked better with three circles of the same size. It feels a bit weird from my point of view, but in terms of taste, everyone will have their own opinion. Let me turn on this equipment while we see what else comes in the box. As you can see, here comes its small key to remove the tray in a small pouch. It's also going to include a tempered glass. And in addition to the tempered glass, it comes with an installation guide. Definitely demonstrating in Phoenix's aggressive strategy. They include everything in the box, good specs and very tight price. Let's see, we also have some paper around here. And the case it comes with is completely rigid. As a plus, it doesn't turn yellow as quickly. Although, honestly, I prefer the cases a little softer. But well, let's see how it looks with this case on so you can more or less see the aesthetics. Also, it adds a little more reflection like all cases. But the case is also stamped with sound by JBL. In fact, on the top, it also has this sound by JBL and I'm struck by the gold frames that are completely reflective. Lastly, we have the charger and its cable, which is 68 watts. USB-A on one side, USB-C on the other side. Very fast charging for this price range. Normally, we see this charging only on high-end devices. So we have high-end charger. Wireless charging, usually only in the high-end. Tempered glass, case included. 256 gigabytes of storage. Probably some bad points we're going to find in the review, but it sounds like a very attractive proposition. I'm going to save all this and come back to let us know the rest of the specifications of this cell phone. Hey, by the way, I forgot to tell you that they include the wireless charger and another special Tesla case that is also rigid. Well, now you do. 
It is 8.1 millimeters thick and weighs 203 grams. It is not characterized by being very light to say. And the screen is AMO LED as we had already anticipated. Then we have a good quality. It feels that it is a relatively modern screen. Unlike other Infinix models that integrated AMO LED screens that felt a little older. In this case, it goes very well. Full HD plus resolution to have a good level of detail. 120 hertz in its refresh rate so we cannot ask much more to this screen especially considering the price then on the screen does not make any sacrifice it is a completely good screen with respect to the cameras we have 32 megapixel selfies and on the back we have 108 megapixel camera on the main lens and then what I call marketing cameras which you could also call them useless cameras but let's see the first impression We have the selfie in the preview still not well balanced in terms of light, but after you take the picture it seems to balance in a better way the result. At least the background that had much more light is no longer completely burned out, although I don't think it's a section where it's going to stand out too much. This is the 108 megapixel camera and we are going to see more or less its level of detail. I think it looks very good, it really looks very detailed. It seems that it does take advantage of it in a good way. Here I took another picture just to see how well it handles the lighting and I think it does it very well. The color looks good, the shadow area also looks well illuminated and this is the maximum 10x zoom where I think it has a good result. I think it is taking good advantage of its high resolution sensor because it is observing this little flower, the one we took in this zoom photo. I think it is performing well, taking good advantage of that sensor, the macro camera. You know I don't like it, but in this case, for textures, it can do well. Notice we have a good level of detail, an even focus as long as the surface is also at the same distance. But for objects, it's definitely still better the main camera. Because this is the result of the macro camera, and this is the result of the main camera, giving a much more saturated color. And here we have a portrait photograph with which it takes advantage of the depth camera. Although many devices can already do this with just the ultra wide camera. So I think it's not so necessary to incorporate the camera for this. That's why I consider it unnecessary. But hey, all in all, the result seems to be positive. It does keep objects in focus by blurring the background. Overall, I think the cameras perform well within what one would expect in this price range. And even as I had already told you, the 108 megapixel camera does manage to take advantage of all that level of detail then in some respects and could be even above what one would expect. Another very strong point will be the storage because we have, look at it, 24.47 gigabytes used, which is just 9% of the total because it has 256 gigabytes. It's definitely a very large amount of storage which is usually only seen in the high end although it's highly likely that it's a little bit simpler or slower version storage let's say which is not the most modern storage but it does have very good capacity. I was already anticipating you that it has 8 gigabytes of RAM 5000 milliamp battery but in this case we're not talking about a 5G device. That's where you start to see a little bit of the cuts that they have to make somewhere to adjust the price. So here we will only see 4G connectivity because the processor is a Helium G99. So now we just need to test a benchmark to see how this processor is doing. So we've got the benchmark ready here and we're going to run it. I'll come back when this is done. Ready, we have the result here in single core, 728 points. It doesn't look that powerful, but within the range, I think it's very good. But in multi-core, it does look much more than you would expect from a device of this price, 2008 points. I think it is very good, just that it does not have 5G, so it has few cuts, but in the review, we will also talk more about the experience of the different functions that integrates and other details. For the moment, we have reached the end of this video. If you liked it, you know you can indicate it, and we'll see you next time.